Welcome everybody to Zero Three Rock News in Time for a quick look at Sir, you're being hunted. Isn't it interesting little indie game in which you play as a Sir or Madame being hunted by gentlemen robots wearing petticoats, shotguns, and pipes and top hats. See, this is a very proper game. What, what? <laughs> so yeah, one of the big things about this game is it's procedurally generated, so each world you go into will be a different world, at least slightly different, so you can have, like, some good luck in one world, bad luck in another, and all this other stuff. Um, you also have, whenever you build a new world, you get to, you get to choose your profession. You have to be the aristocrat, which is the default. Um, you just start off with with uh, rags for bandages, which is, you know, use that to stop bleeding. Um, then you have, like, the gamekeeper, which you get all this stuff here. Um, inventor, officer, cook, artist, old soak, and back to the aristocrat. I'm not going to create a new world because that would take forever for it to load. It does take a while to load. There are five. Actually, no, let me go ahead and go this far at least. There are five islands that can be built, and eat. This is there. You go. That is. You can build each of these things on each island, except the central island. They're going to be rural or custom. Um, and if we edit this island, it'll be you know built differently. You know, you have like hedge fields, walled fields, so on and so forth, all that stuff. Um, yeah, they say on the warning for this, it could cause some unplayable parts of the game to happen, but yeah. I haven't done that yet. You got edit robots here, which adds the frequency of, of the robots and when they come in. Um, time elapsed or pieces return, so yeah. Um, so yeah, you can actually set all this up for yourself. So you can actually set it to be pretty easy, or... One thing I was thinking of doing that could be a possibility is you set it all to be really high at first and just have it slowly go down as time goes on, you guys have to like, give it up the hunt. But yeah. Um, anyway, we're not going to do all that. Um, we're going to go into the bait into the world one, which is the first world I created. This is with the aristocrat. So this is essentially the default way, the intended way to play the game. Um, See right there, it's telling you that robots will investigate and always use that to your advantage. Um, so what are you supposed to do in this game aside from, you know, avoid being hunted by the robots? Well, there are 16, or I guess 17 pieces of this machine that you have to find. And you have to return them back to this place called the Stone Circles, which is where you started. Um, in fact, actually, yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and head to their, head back to that area. Um, you always start off in the central island. No matter what, you always start off in the central island. You can only stay at a boat or the uh, stone circle. Those are your two, or I guess five areas to the same, because there are four boats. Um, you stay on Maxi between regions. Uh, but you can also manually save at a boat. You can't save while you're bleeding. You can't say, yeah. Think about you're bleeding or starving. Um, which actually transitions to the visibility, health, and vitality seat you see in the corner here. So real quick, we're going to go over the, the basics of the HUD and everything. So you got the visibility, the health, and vitality. Your visibility shows you how visible you are to the robots, how much noise you're making essentially, and how well hidden you are. Um... If we go down here, we're pretty invisible. Um, so yeah, you, I have this mapped out to control. The default is C, which is really weird. Um, right here, you can see the circle in, your com in the compass. Uh, that's, where the that's where the stones are. The uh, pentagrams, pentagons, excuse me, are uh, where the boats are. Um, you have to find the fragments on your own. You can't use the map or anything. You can't use the map or anything. But you can find maps. And right there's some robots. Um, right here you may notice a little triangle. 
right there. Um, I have that set. Let's see, is it from Game Options, I believe. Uh, right here, display enemy markers. I have that set because I'm not really good at this game. But whenever these enemy, these robots see you, you'll see a oh, exclamation mark. Whenever it turns red, they spot you. Whenever you see that symbol, the exclamation and question mark, they're searching for you frantically. Question mark means you've lost. They lost you. And he's probably gonna see me right here, isn't he? Is he? Yep, he saw me. Run right away. So here's the thing about your health. You will recover health automatically as long as you're not starving or bleeding. Uh, the way you bleed is if they hit you with a good enough shot that it causes bleeding. Um, check inventory here, nothing there I want to get, okay. Uh, the opens inventory, you interact with stuff. Uh, you see all these doors here, you can interact with the doors, and each door acts like a, tre like a treasure chest. You can get something there, uh, oh, running, 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 running! Uh, nothing there that I want to get, all that dubious stuff or useless stuff. Ah, already got a flashlight. I got a pistol. Do be careful with that. I really think violence is best left to the experts. Okay, so here we have a pistol, our first weapon. Um, he seems to have lost us. Okay, as you can tell, we only have about six rounds. So, oh crap! Okay. So we're wounded, we use I that to heal. It might be best to run and hide. But Crap, you nothing. have found a weapon. So perhaps you can use it to fend them off. Yeah. Um pretty much what he said there. Um this guy that guy I don't know who that guy is, but he's like uh, He's like the narrator, I guess. He's like telling he's the one that, that kinda I think told you that the experiment, like, you're doing this experiment or something that failed and you wound up here in the archipelago, as I keep calling it. Um, I'm gonna use these bottles, I need those. Um. Oh, here we go, hatchet. Set of pliers. Okay. Uh, as far as the junk goes, I don't know if the junk has any use. Um, there might be some use later on for, like, some of this stuff. Uh, I do know the dead rat, and there's like there's other stuff that's labeled as dubious, like the pipe right there, can actually hurt you, as well as have a small chance of helping you. Um, alas, a skull. <laughs> I like that. Um, so we got rags for bandages, we got a large trap, um, with a, we'll trap most robots. Um, and I thought I discarded that. There we go. Um... So I can use that to reclaim traps. So if I say let lay down this large trap and I need to pick it back up, I can just use a, I guess use the pliers and I guess I use that up in place of it. Um, so right here we have a clock in our position. If we right click, we can change the timer for it. And I don't know how to set it. Um, I can't throw it. I guess you gotta place it on the ground. Um, let's see nothing here. Uh, just let you know those eggs are dubious, so yeah, I would not trust the moldy bread or the eggs and stuff like that. Anything that basically looks disgusting, yeah. Uh, get that flask of lukewarm tea. Ooh, quick, sweet. Okay. I'm glad I came back to the, to the central area. Jar of marmalade restores vitality. Um, I'm feeling like certain certain things restore things at different rates, like. This will restore a little bit of vitality, or this will restore a lot more, I think. I know the can the canned pie will restore, like, almost all your vitality, it seems. Um, alright, check this house. Mature Dilton. Okay. So, let's see what else here. Uh, unfortunately, those boots that we keep running in, that we keep seeing, you can't equip the boots, so, no. Um, I already, I already checked that. Um, to be honest, I'm quite surprised I'm surviving this song already. <laughs> so, uh, you got different, I guess you could say, ruins, I guess you could call, the, call these places. Um, 
that you'll run into throughout your journey. Um, what is this? Victims of the Marmalade Famine. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. All those are victims. Huh. I don't know what those... I'm wondering if those are like... I'm not... I'm not sure this game might, might have been kickstarted in that. And those might be like some of the kickstarters. I know there's another thing you know, I, I ran into. Are like victims of the oil of the oil plague. I think it's like the victims of the black oil plague. Or in my other file. Um, so I'm wondering if those are all... Those are probably different if I remember correctly. I think those are different. Um, let's see, right here, and, oh, wait, what's, my mushrooms, okay, I don't want to try the mushrooms, those my, actually, I kind of want to try the mushrooms to see what would happen, <laughs> that would actually make it, make things look trippy or not, but, I don't, I don't know, I don't feel like, tri like trusting it, did that give us some more vitality? Um, you start running out of vitality, you start dying of, of, Starvation and well, obviously you can't. Yeah, we can't let that happen. Uh, let's see this. We got two printed letters. This old person. It does seem as if there's a reason for concern. Only with a messenger bird named on arrivals. Okay, so I've read this one before. So let's see this one different. It has been several weeks since I last heard from you or, or mother. And I'm being worried. Perhaps you can get in touch and let me know that you're okay. I've just moved into New Flans, in Swansea, and the promotion has enabled me to purchase a 1970s dilemma hatchback. You'd like it, although it has the same design flaws as the Troop of Man Horse, which we used to visit the Dales. And it's not too much trouble. I'd like to visit again. Oh, uh, well, okay. So these letters, I think can just go in there. And actually, I'm going to move some stuff around in here so I can put some stuff away. Uh, there we go. So one thing you may have noticed with the loot here, um, some loot, some loot crates, I guess you'd call them that. <laughs> and I just realized, I just now realized what uh, what that could be a joke to. Um, I mean, some loot areas are red, while others are green. Green, you can put stuff back into, as well as take stuff out. Red, you can only take stuff out. Um, you'll only, you'll primarily, you'll primarily find red inside of enemies, or when you're picking up a fragment of the... Um, of the broken machine that you're supposed to be picking up. Um, so, yeah. Um, um, I'm trying to think now what else was there. Guy is on to me. Gotta get this fast. So now that we have a hatchet, oh, oh. it's going to be hunting me down. Um, Q will let you look along edges. Oh. There we go. Feed our first robot. I guess this will be our second robot. <laughs> um, Woohoo! I'm actually doing good right now. <laughs> um,. Hey, look, I might be able to... Oh, basically what I'd be showing you if I showed you the other character, the other world, is basically the same thing, just you start off with more gear. Uh, like, the game... Like, uh, I have in my second world, I have the uh, Game Master, Game Maker, whatever the, whatever they call it. I can never remember its name. Um, and I'm using that... Yeah, um, it gives you a, a hatchet to start off with. And a few other things, um, but really, it's like that's it. I'm assuming the others are the same, um, pretty much. Um, so you got different ways of starting off at the beginning, but I can definitely see. Oh, that's small falls. 
And if we see like towards the end game, it all starting to feel a little bit a bit samey. So it's all about how hard you want to start off with, or how many uh, J4K TV smells. Jim was here, huh? Cool. Wooly bucket in the wool in the wool. Um. So yeah. I, anyway. Um. So right here we got some fields of grain, I guess, some growing crops. We can actually hide down here and the robots won't see us, assuming they're not hunting for us. Um, right here we got our stone circle. This is the only other area we can save aside from the boats. So I'm going to go ahead and save the progress. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Saving the game, you can barely see that. Uh, right there, you see that balloon. That is a guy that lost. Be very down. observant, sir. Startled wildlife could help you to spot your pursuers. The eyes and ears of local fauna might be sharper than your own. Hmm. So yeah, what he said. Um. Now that I have a hatchet, I feel a lot more, a little bit more in control of the situation. Um, I do want to show off at least one of the other islands, or at least get one of the artifact pieces, or whatever they're called, the mysterious mechanism pieces, the mysterious fragments, I think they're called. Um... Because the way you find the mysterious fragments, you're looking for like white smoke in the back, in the distance, and that will take you to them. Um, each island has a, has a specific amount, like the first, like north, south, east, and west islands have three, where the central has four, so yeah, it's not anything too uh, crazy. Let's see what the model like does. That only does ten, damn. Uh, let's see what the lukewarm tea does. Ooh. It filled me up. <laughs> we can at least assume it did 50. Drop of sherry. And I probably want to move before I get caught by that. Um, the thing the balloons do is it basically just uh, alerts other robots to you. Um, so, yeah, uh, you can possibly use that to your advantage, um, or just, you know, be a coward in a way. Um, I kind of want to find a fire, see if I can find, oh, over here. Right here you see this. See some robots in the distance. Uh, you might see some black smoke. Looks like a fire has just been out. Um, you can go over there to start a fire. Be careful though, because the minute you start that fire, other all the robots can be alerted to your presence. Um, hopefully, that will get their attention. Um, all right, by, yep, got their attention. He sees me! They see me! Run away! Run away! I can't get that dead bird! Uh... No. Oh crap, there's a lot of them. Okay, I, can, I don't think I can fight them all with an axe. Um... <laughs> I think I got the entire army on me, jeez. The robot apocalypse is very real. <laughs> Shooting at me, I just want to get off the islands. Why are there robots shooting at me? <laughs> I think they I think I got away from the I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop. I'm not I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I'm 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 gonna keep going. Um I think you're trying to get in the water like a giant squid robot tries to attack. I think it's I think it's a robot. Um but yeah, I'm heading, I'm gonna head towards the south road. So towards the, right there, I can see it right there. Um, 
Oh, right here we see some mushrooms. You can pick these up. Um, right here you see the uh, red inventory. That's an example. I can't drop stuff in there. See, so this goes back. Um, can't drop stuff like that. If you just if you discard something, it's gone for good. So yeah, um, it's probably a better idea to just kind of like hold on to what you can and store certain items. Like stuff that you don't need at the moment, or stuff that you may want to come back for. Um, go ahead and save progress, and we'll take a look south. Um, I'm trying to remember what I what I had laid out each island to be, because like I showed you, you can choose your islands and kind of the layouts for them, sort of. Um, you can kind of tweak it a little bit, or you can do the customize and it's kind of really, suppose it screw up the world, but I'm trying to remember what I had to, I know when I did one of each I want to say, I just don't remember which one um, and this one looks like it did the castle it looks like why this guy is purple, I will never know And I'm forced to go in the water for this. I'm gonna get up from. Um, oh wow! Well, let me do that again. Okay, so you got the blurriness. Oh, that is cool. Like they keep the blurry, the blurry vision a little bit. That's like real life. Um, am I? S Please don't tell me I'm stuck. Please tell me that they actually programmed some logic into this world to. Oh, wait, I might be able to get up from here. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sort of. Okay, there you go. It's a bit of a hassle, but I think it's, I think it's okay. Um, all right, here, already I'm seeing an artifact, or a mysterious fragment, or whatever they want to call it. Right here, we'll get that. We got... Oh, and this one's a small one. Nice, okay. So it's a small piece, so I can actually hold on to it. Uh, they come in different sizes, just that you know. Um, I see these blue things, the kind of like wisps going all over the place. I have no clue if there's any logic to those. And holy crap, there's a lot of these guys here. Oh boy. Um, Rosengall Hall, uh, that's not much here. I wish you could explore the houses and stuff, and the other stuff, um, one, two, three, four, five, you know what, let's do this, Brooklyn Rage! Ah! What the hell am I thinking? Ah! Ah! Wounding! Wounded! Wounded! Ah, and I got it. Okay, we're gonna... Yeah, you can tell I died quite a bit here. <laughs> the game I probably haven't even played an hour or into yet. Actually, that's probably a lot. I probably played at least two hours into this so far. Um... Vittles. You lose health if you're bleeding. No ban these bandages prevent blood loss. Bandages will not restore health. Okay. Actually, one thing I do want to do real quick. This is gonna be like the bulk of the game right here. Just rearranging your inventory. <laughs> Anyone who's who's played Deus Ex or Diablo uh, or any game like that that has like these kind of this kind of inventory system will know. That this is a thing. <laughs> yes, this is perfectly acceptable game design, <laughs> and it works for some reason. It works. Um, basically, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to get this stuff to where I can easily access my bandages from the or, uh, like as quickly as I can, essentially. Um, Let 
And one thing I, also, I will say, this game does not hold your hand. <laughs> it does not seem to want to hold your hand very well. It's like, mm -mm, not going to happen. Okay, so we almost got this done. Um, let's go ahead and set that up there. Um... Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, so we need to go this way. And right away... Right away we had that uh, that uh, th a thing here. And instead of, instead of going that way like we did last time... Right with that there. So we're heading towards that way. I think I'm going to head this way. Um... I'm gonna head towards that building, see what's over here. Okay. Ooh, but first we're gonna check here. Uh, this is a neat little shack I've seen before. Um, they're typically in like secluded areas, so like they're easy to. It's easier to explore these. Um, they typically only have one door though. Um, gotta reorganize again. <laughs> Sorry, this is my ADD talking. All right here we have a map of the islands. Um, if we open it up or use it, we have a map of where we're at. Um, that looks like that's the way to go, the way to end. Um, you got three markers you can drop. Um, the heck wrong with my axe? Alternate, you can press M to open it, or alternatively, just open it up from the inventory. Um, if we place a marker down, we can place up to three markers. They'll show up on the map, as you can see right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clear the marker. Um, I have no clue where to go right now, so... The use of the marker might be if you can't, if you can't get a, uh, a certain fragment you can come back to it when you're bet when you're more when you're more well prepared so that could be one use of it um, but there we go there's a door for this I am going to eat this cheese I'm going to eat this cheese, and I'm going to move this up here. I'm going to move this over here. I really don't need the flashlight all that often. I don't rely on flashlights because the flashlight can you can use it to see, but mm, it also means you're going to be seen. So what else do we need to drop here? Uh, no, actually, I'm gonna save. Them. I'm gonna save that. I'm pretty good right now as far as food. Uh, what else here? I think that's it. Yeah, I think there's only one door for these for these cathedrals. I've only seen one door at least. Um, and I've this is like the third one I've run into. So yeah. Um. What happened if I... That's leading me to the sea. Uh, I'll try heading over there. So let's set that marker up and head towards that direction. See what, get, see what that gets us. Um... So yeah, there's not really much more I can say about this. Um... The, is this? Oh, okay, yeah, that's something we can interact with. Um, some of the stuff like the dubious food is stuff that you only want to deal with when you have, like, nothing else to eat. Like, when you're completely, like, completely out of other foods and, like, that your options are gone. Um, which might be the whole point of it. Um, 
Uh, I have like four traps right now. And that cat food is a bit dubious. Um, so let's see if I, let's see if I can find the other find those find some robots that aren't in as big a group as the last one we saw. Actually, hold on. What happened to following that? What happened to that? One? Yeah, we went there. Okay. Do that. Um, you know, check out this castle. Let's see what this brings us. Anything here? Nope. Someone who can read code, uh, translate that. We need, I need to know. We need to know what that says. If that says anything, or if it's just random gibberish. <laughs> um, I think it's basic code. It's zero, it's zeros and ones. We have a stone. We can throw. We can use those to throw about three throwing items right now. And actually, this would probably be better to use in the bottles. Yeah, the stone would probably be better to use in the bottles, I would. Um, well, it looks... James H. Paul, cat lover, brother, and metal fan. <laughs> January 6, 2012. Wow. Oh, uh, the robot apocalypse. 1988 to 1988, level 12 fighter. <laughs> uh, what are these, like, the names of the actual people, like, the actual people who worked on the, who's worked on the game? It's in here, nothing. That'd be cool, if, that'd be cool if they, if they were the actual, actual programmers. Um, let's see, can we get another fragment? Ouch. Okay, that's something I just found out. Taking heavy falls will damage you. <laughs> they will hurt you, so yeah, probably wanna stay out of those. Stay out of that. Um, go across here quickly. Don't wanna risk running into the giant squid. Ugh. Or octopus. <laughs> if they're on there long enough to know where that goes. It never ends not it never ends well for the human. At least I'm assuming I'm a human. Might be a ro might be a robot. Oh maybe I'm maybe they're hunting because I'm like a fugitive or something. And the like the reason the experiment went wrong and that's why I'm here because I was like sent to since like prison and this is like my my sentence. Okay, so... so hit him. So we got... I'm gonna try my... It seems like if you're gonna go on the offensive, the best thing you can do is like try a zigzag pattern around them. And like, once you get that first hit, it's pretty easy to knock them out after. Um... Go ahead and start that. Leave that. Okay, now I gotta figure out how to um, discard that. And there you go. If you're lucky enough to kill a robot, you can get their shotgun. Most of the time, they'll be broken when you get them. So, yeah. Make that what you will. Ooh, sweet. If you get unload, raw meat. So, it doesn't seem like I can pick that up. Me. Uh. Oh. Okay. So, if you're lucky enough, you can get a second. You can get the guns off the robots. Apparently, I was lucky enough to get two guns. Um, usually they're busted, usually they're busted, but this gives us the op the rare opportunity to really let loose and, well, cause some damage. Um, 
<laughs> of course, that's probably the last thing we need to do right now is waste ammo and bun on bunches of robots. I could also. I could also. I'm hearing gunshots. No one's around, so they must be hunting other people or other animals. I don't know. I do want to eventually make it back to my boat. Or to the boat. Before, uh... Ah, they see me! Oh, crap. Oh, no, they, they hear... What's going on? They look confused about something. I'm not sure what. Let me uh, get some distance here real quick though. I don't know what they are planning or what they're doing. Um, but I think I want to stay away from them. Head over this way, because I, like I said, I want to get to the boat so I can save and end this video before it goes on too long. Um, and oh crap, there's two of them right there. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm... Might be able to sneak. Oh, crap, crap, crap. Fine, if you hide before they can knock on you, they typically will come chasing after you, which in this case might be a good thing. Because I have the hatch, if I can get them to take corners, I can hit them with the left chance of actually taking damage. Crap, can you see me? Run! I'm bleeding out, I'm bleeding out! Okay. You? You? Yes. Okay. Whew. Wait. Okay. I was about to say, what happened with the rest of my bullets? They're all down here. Okay, let's see if I can pick up some bullets from this guy. Nope. But I can unload this and... Take the bullets from them. Whew! Okay. Yeah! <laughs> I am showing those robots who's boss. I am showing the robots who the, who the, who the superior beings are. Uh, now, which way am I going? Actually, I don't need that. Um, in fact, we can probably put some of this stuff away. Now that I know how to use these, I can probably use them more effectively. Um, I don't think I said, I don't think I mentioned it, but originally I didn't know how to, use the, how to use the alarm clock. Apparently, they're only, you can only use them if you're looking at the ground. Whereas, like, the broken glass and the, uh, the rock you can actually toss and throw. Um, which kind of brings some more dynamics into the game that I did not notice, I did not realize were there. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, my gosh. Um, got like too many alarms anyway. Um, I probably should be doing it, put some, put some away, but, Ooh, use, okay. What's this? Huh. Lumble Bog Shot, Winter Britain and Bloom. <laughs> so something tells me this game was made in the Australia. Yep, definitely Australia. 
No, honestly, this game look, it seems like it's this. Like, has the urge to kill. Ah! Crap! Okay, I have too much ammo. Fire! Fire! And oh, gotta reload. And fire! No, fire! There you go. Woohoo! Okay. Use that. Take that. Reload. Okay, I think <laughs> I'm feeling pretty dominant right now. Holy crap! I am feeling very dominant right now. Oh. Uh, I have too much right now. Not. Discard these. I'm not using them anyway. Um, discard one more. There we go. Um, I need to find a fire to light those up. Have a yep. Have a set of maps that can do that. Okay. Crap! I see. I hear someone. They they spot me. Ah. Okay. Well, Mr. Robot. Nope, nothing. Okay, now that we have two artifacts in hand, let's get this. We need one. We have one more to look for. Maybe we'll find it on the way if we get, if we make a mad dash. Okay. Uh, what's what's this here? In twelve in twelve nine AD, the site was still in the settlement of intoxicated farmers. Hmm. That's good to know. Yeah, that's another that's another thing that may be indication that this is a British game. <laughs> One is everything seems British with with the gentlemanly like characters and the robots. Though that could easily just be someone trying to like, trying to poke fun at the idea. But two is uh, the dry humor. <laughs> For as we all know, Britain is full of people with dry humor. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to even call it that. <laughs> actually, what am I saying? I actually like the actually like uh, British comedy quite a lot. Actually, um, so let me see. Um, In here, I'm not sure if you can drown, but I'm gonna go ahead and save the progress. And whew, okay, so we are going on 43 minutes right now. Wow, okay, so that was Sir, you are being hunted. An indie game that I got for about five bucks. Um, I think it's only about 15, maybe 20. I would say it's worth the price. I'd say it's worth the twenty bucks for the procedurally generated idea and the different class and stuff like that. But you know, if you don't like this type of game, you kind of already know whether or not you like it. It's a big stealth and really big, uh, really big emphasis on survival. And it's maybe one of the few first-person survival games that actually does a good job of giving of. of Distilling that um, that feeling of urgency about like wanting to survive and stuff. So yeah. Um, with all that said, uh, real quick, I'm gonna save again just to make sure. Go quit to the menu. And oh my god, oh my robot dogs! Oh, robot dogs are so adorable. Oh. This is until they bite your head off. <laughs> um. Oh, oh crap, yeah, I can try to bite my head off now. But yeah. So that was Sir, You're Being Hunted. Now, my choice of the second world, except that it's pretty much going to be the same at this point. Um. Fall error. Oh, I know, because I didn't, I never finished it, so I just deleted it. There you go. <laughs> um, so I never finished it, that's why it's a fall error. But anyway. So that was Sir, You're Being Hunted. A fun little quirky game. Kind of, kind of a weird concept. 
Um, there's also an alternate mode to this game called Madame, You Are Being Hunted, where you can play as a woman instead. The big difference is that the cutscene set calls you Madame instead of Sir, so yeah. With all that said, I'll see you guys later.